Hello, my name is Douglas Link and I am an interviewer for the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. I am interviewing today Mr. William Gerald. It's Monday, October 9th, 2006 and we're at the main branch of the Hamilton County Library. Our camera operator today is Albert Hallenberg. Also present here today is Bill's wife Ruth and sister Sylvia. Um, daughter Sylvia, excuse me, daughter Sylvia. Uh, Mr. Gerald has kindly consented to come here today from Burlington, Kentucky and talk to us about his World War II experiences. Well, what year were you inducted into the Navy? 1943? Yeah. Where did you report for service? Great Lakes. Great Lakes. The Great Lakes Naval Station in Illinois? In Illinois. And how, tell me about basic training. Tell him about your basic training. training. Well, I went to boot camp, and uh, I think it was about six, five weeks when they were five. short. That when they needed and lots of Navy people like that. So we didn't go to boot camp at all. Mostly just getting shots and, uh, and exercise and stuff. Planes and stuff, different So we didn't have much boot camp. It more or less, like I say, getting shots and kind of getting physical shape to go in. And I've come home for how many days for I'd say four or five days. Talk louder, And I went in back to the naval base and went straight out to California and got on a troop ship and went to. Uh, Hawaii and waited till they got the carrier that had been damaged some reason by another ship that hit it and they were getting it ready to go so we stayed in Transit City where the Marines were there in a tent for I guess four or five days before we got on the ship and then I got on the aircraft carrier and started supplies and all that stuff. When the ship had been emptied, you know, it took quite a while to get it stocked back up with supplies and ammunition and stuff like that. And we went out and uh, had a shakedown, like they call on the ship, like uh, see it to catapults and everything was working pretty proper. And then later on, we went and joined the Assembled the third book, they called the third fleet. Third and fifth was the same fleet, but a, a different. Uh, Hawley was in, uh, on the third, and I think Nimitz was on the uh, fifth fleet, maybe. But it was the same, four task groups. And there's uh, four carriers in each task group. And uh, we were one of the carriers on the small one, CBL they called it, it was a small one, it wasn't as size as a heart and a wasp and then, but we would be two, two small carriers and two uh, large carriers in each task group. There were four task groups in the third group. Mm -hmm. And you were stationed on the USS Cowpens? Yeah, I was on the Cowpens. It was, we were always a lead carrier. I don't know why it always worked out that way, but uh, uh, there was two large carriers, like the Harvard and the Walsh class. And, and the, uh, the Independence was the uh, night fighters. They had night fighters on the Independence. Mm -hmm. They were uh, one the same size as the Cowboys. So where did you where did where did your first voyage go? Well, we went to many we go first place, and they started organizing the third fleet, and then we were all over the Pacific Coast. The, the Jack had the Philippines and Formosa and all that, and we were mostly going to go between the Philippines and the Formosa. That's where most of the planes were coming down from Japan through from most of down to the Philippines. We didn't even have the Philippines back then. Mm -hmm. so you talk louder? 
Can you talk louder? Talk a little louder. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can't tell how loud I can talk. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what else you want to about uh, time when some of the ships were hit or something. Absolutely, action. Yeah, well, <coughs> every time we went up to promotion, we had a uh, lot of gas planes. We shut down, over, I think, over a thousand at one time. There was all the time we shut down. And then uh, in the main time we were hit, they got cruiser, our cruiser, I, I think it was Canberra, uh, hit the first night they come in with the torpedo things, they hit our heavy cruiser, well, I think it was Canberra. So the next night they replaced us with the Houston and then notice the first attack come in, hit the Houston. And they were also then one uh, out in there with uh, cave box and stuff that were floating around the next morning. Some of them were dead and some of them were But I, I think they went back on it. So later on we took the, them on their tow, both the Houston and the Canberra. They put somebody both the uh, chain and, and they, they took them on their tow. So uh, then we we would go back to meet the tankers, so most of them left, and they left uh, just one carrier, and we would to take care of the cruisers. And, and the Japs gave a pretty rough time until we got back, because they thought they sunk the whole fleet. Yeah. But actually, it was just three units that we just went back. We always were out about three days, and then we'd go back and meet the tankers, and refuel and get to the supplies. And, we took everything on out to sea, bombs and everything, food and every, everything we got, we took on out to sea. So after, after we got back from that, that I think at that time when we had the terrible typhoon. What year was that? What is that? What year? And then, Every December 18, 1944. It's on her birthday, <laughs> the worst ever was. But anyhow, we'd come back from Formosa, and uh, we had to get fuel because we were low on fuel. So we finally did get refueled. Always, the gunner division always helped us with refueling, and I always helped them to one of the stoppers sometimes to take them. A jeep and several men to get to the main oil line on that, that we'd hook up from the tanker. And they usually use guidelines, but this time the seas were so rough that they, they were lucky to get refueled. We did that, I think, for the cans that, that, that were destroyed during the, that typhoon. We both, I think they both run out of fuel oil because they could take rough sea better than the regular carrier was. Mm -hmm. During the storm, and we lost all of our uh, airplanes. We'd spotted them, but they hadn't taken the gasoline out of them, and they weren't ready. They were ready, they were ready for the storm, but uh, I remember being on condition three watching seeing the officer, the air officer, which was lost during the storm. I never did know what happened to him, but I seen him come up on condition three watch with an autobiographic watch, and uh, I'd say they come up out of the, the war room, the officer's room, and I'd seen him that morning. We were all watching. Three from four to eight, I believe that one we were on. And the storm was just getting worse all the time. And it started, uh, we were making real bad rolls, and finally we were trying to put out the fire, but the uh, plane would get over into the 
catwalk and catch on fire, and we had magazines all up near the top of the thing. But uh, Ted was able to, the father, the captain said, not to find gold to get, get, get rid of all. And we finally did, did the ship would roll from starboard to port, and, and uh, they'd get on fire as soon as they'd go over and get in the catwalk. And for a while, we was trying to put them out, but they tried to get rid of them. Finally, we lost all of them. All of them were gone the right there. Finally, we uh, tried to get rid of them. Pushed them over the side into the ocean? What is it? Pushed them off the ship? Well, they, the water took them off. The water was rolling all the water degrees. It wasn't supposed to, the ship wasn't supposed to roll, take that big roll. But they were washing clear up to the flight deck, and they, the good thing that we're taking the planes off was that every time they run over in, in the catwalk or gun mount and stuff, they'd catch on fire. But as soon as they roll back from starboard to port or they away, the water would take them all. And that's the only thing I said. The, the, the ship had we'd taken on some uh, heavy bombs and they tied them down low on them where they kept the bombs and stuff. They didn't have the heads in them, but they were broke loose some of them. So the carpenters make were helping to get to the four for four, that's what we used for the flight deck. They were helping with the uh, waiting the bombs in and stuff, keeping them from blowing, but they, they, everybody thought it was going to blow up the ship, you know. But we did survive that, and we, we, actually we come back to the state, not, we'd had so many flights on the captain, it had so many landing on it, or uh, we got springy, or, or flight day, they got so the plane would land if they didn't catch the first tail hook, they'd jump over the barrier. Mm -hmm. And the planes that would pull, you know, they had mares on the carrier, and they'd let them down right after the plane would land, and they'd pull up uh, above, and they'd start working on them, you know, getting more bombs on them, and gassing them and stuff. Before they'd spot them back, and they'd get them all down. So, uh, Uh, the storm was one of the worst things that ever happened. Of course, we had a lot of jet suicide planes every time we had to come in. Tell us about that. Tell us about the kamikazes. Well, we had lots of them all the time. About every, every time we go, we usually go three days uh, uh, up at the, closer to the target. They usually try to get in there about 60 or 70 miles if we were going. The first time we went to Japan, we got up to about 60 miles. So that gave the pilots more time over the target. So, uh, and it. Uh, Tell me about your 40, you were on that 40 millimeter gun. 40 mil. You were a gunner. You were a gunner. You were a gunner. What? Gunner. I don't know, we had 40s. At one time we had 20s, so we had we just had aircraft guns. And, uh, and we had 40s, I don't know, 40s on the fan tail. Right? Uh, to take not only to fire where I was to fire, but, but they fired with the director above the gun. That was quad, they had quad on the fan tail. That's why right. the damage is here. They used to get 20 to get rid of them. I wouldn't want to count that anyhow. And it's small stuff. No earplugs. And then after... Uh, they had after no earplugs at all. They took one of the use. carrier out of the fleet. And to the captain who went into Comet Bay. And uh, they would... Uh, our pilots then flew over and landed in Japan to be sure they didn't comply with all the requirements that they were to take the prop off the plane and stuff like that. 
but uh, yeah, so they stayed over there all the time when they, said it, when they signed the peace on the Missouri Fool. We were on the carrier in there, of course, but we were pretty close to the Missouri when they signed the peace there. But uh, then we, we left. We went back out in Chicago Bay. Of course, to get in, you had to, the Japanese had to take us in because they still had some of the nets in the Tokyo Bay. But they had taken the carrier in, and so after the peace was signed and stuff, and we got ready to come home, we did pick up a flight down in Sukhumi Bay, and uh, we did go out and we got them all over to the last pilot didn't make it. He, 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 was, uh, he didn't quite get up high enough when the, the flagman was bringing them in, you know, how you see him on the carrier. And he was bringing them in, and he was too low. I knew he was too low. He was in the gun mount back there. So we, we took cover because it, it looked like he was going to be up high enough to hit right that quite. So he went over to the side and uh, that jumped in the net and he came out of the net and he jumped in the, in the bay to try to get to him, but he didn't get to him time enough. So the last one to come on, uh, our pilot drowned. So that's about most of that. Of course, like I said, uh, after the war was over, they declared that Japanese had surrendered. We had a suicide plane and uh, up above we knew it was up there. And uh, he probably did come down because they couldn't land back all they could do was they told him to take off. But it had uh, it finally come down, but it didn't uh, and we could see it up there for a while. But we, I guess he decided they was kind of getting his nerve to go down and, and they usually went for the bigger carriers if they could first, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course they had more planes on there to do more damage. But he come down, he come pretty close to one of the big carriers, but he, he, we could see him from where I was at the guards and stuff. And they were all, were all firing at him. Finally they shot a wing off and he missed it. I don't know how many people seen more than that, I guess. But anyhow, they missed it. Thank goodness they didn't hit that. Because yeah. <laughs> they'd hit so many, I may try to hit them as soon as the, when they were first all taken off, like the Bunker Hill, when they hit it, they didn't get the one plane off, and the rest of them were all had pilots in them, and, and they hit the come down with a suicide plane that burn everybody up on the flight deck or bucket it and well it killed several of them. I don't know. They said that close to the side. said that, that his aircraft carrier shot down over a thousand times. That's what I thought he said. That, is that what that was? That was the first time we got to the promotion. You didn't tell him that you came home while they were repairing your ship after the, after the uh, typhoon uh, when we came back home. Of course, we were we were for a long home. time before they kept them. I remember when of course, it was news, it was unusual news when uh, uh, the president was shot down. He was just a regular naval guy. He was on a small carrier as he was in our in the third fleet. I guess he was in the invasion fleet. I, I think that was called the fifth. But, uh, they pulled him out from the beach some and submarine picked him up. But uh, it was. It was Knowledge in the fleet, you know. Of course, they didn't know he'd ever be. He wasn't president. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was just ordinary flyer, you know. 
but uh, the two, they had two of them in Germany. He's talking about George Bush. Yeah, he's talking about when George Bush was shot down by near Chichijima. Yeah. And rescued by a Navy submarine. Yeah. He didn't come on your ship, though. No. So, how did the war end for you? How long until you got back to the States? Well, to stay. You mean come home? Well, you came home about October of 45. And then you had to go back to uh, well, Great Lakes to get, to get mustard out. And then by Christmas, he was home to stay. May uh, 45. Uh, what they call him went back in the hall. People back from overseas, you know. And uh, they kept, the other officer kept taking, telling him he was going to take me back, but he didn't. I had enough time and point to get out. So, so I, I did finally get on back in San Diego and come home. I right for a neat job, man. We didn't, uh, we didn't have much income. My wife, I think, got my wife of one child got $80 a month. And I, mean, I don't know what I got enough to buy cigarettes and clothes and stuff. You had to buy your own clothing when you was in the Navy, Army. And, and they, they gave you the first outfit you had, and then you bought your own. But we had a, Good ship. The food yeah. was reasonable. The food was good? Yeah, the best yeah, that they yeah. had. The executive officer made sure that the food was the best. It better have been the best because that, that, you know, a lot of times we run short on supplies and we didn't have that much stuff. We always had coffee. And I didn't got a vision. We helped refuel. And, and Put on supplies and stuff, took he on all the ammunition. He didn't have to go. He went in when he was just 24 and uh, we were married and had a child and a girl, not this one, but five years older than her. Anyway, uh, she, she's a, what do they call on the <laughs> Baby boomer. Yeah. Uh, I was born in October of 46. Yeah. But uh, he, he volunteered. Because all of his friends were going in, and he felt that it, so he was running a newspaper. When, uh, so he didn't have to go. The old city newspaper, weekly. Yeah, I went with the group. I always had said when the first married man went, so all of them had come with me to Cincinnati. And then I went in, but I think it was two of us that went uh, after that went in to serve the old war. But but never been sorry we did. I mean, Although we did lose walk in Kentucky and were killed. I think there was about twelve young men out there. The best people would have been in the community, been leaders now. They didn't use earplugs with us. They do now, I understand, but with us the gunneries, they had no earplugs. So probably a lot of gunners came home deafened. And yeah. he, he's almost totally dead. Yeah, he didn't it's really been a shame. Shame. Yeah. been a real plague. But I he, hope he talked about that. He owned part of it. He, he ran the newspaper. And then when he came back, he didn't have that, so he had to go to work. See, he gave that up to go to the war. Did you stay in touch with your Navy buddies? Did he? When we went to, when they, they named the sh uh, ship a uh, missile cruiser, it's in the book uh, after the Calpent. I think the Calpent had uh, 12 bronze stars by more than any other carrier, I guess, and we got the, a unit citation from the Congress. And, uh, I, was, I had eight. I never got to work when you 
wanted to come home. I know where the state's going to work it out in this city. And after that, you know, there no place in the world. It was where I was. <laughs> but anyhow, we think we got to the war. You know, there's lots of that's made it pretty tough at times. We missed it. Okinawa last time we wanted to go back getting, like I say, getting repairs on our ship. We lost all of our and, uh, we lost all of them things, but then they put the floor in and then we went back out to the war was over. But uh, and, yeah. We were lucky again. We were on a few carriers that wouldn't hit so, uh, in the most all the battles. I was lucky to be on a famous carrier like the Cowboys. It, it, it don't sound as okay as the Bunker Hill and some of the bigger ones. They were like the ship. Bunker Hill it, it was hit worse than anybody. That was quite Suicide pilots hit it when all their pilots were on there. I think they got one off of the uh, Franklin, maybe one or two catapults off. You know, the first ones were all catapults off. And then the others would fly away off the back, but they didn't get any of theirs off of the bunker. You know, they just burned them up. And they had bombs on them and, and rockets and full of gasoline hitting the middle of the deck with them pilots all in there and they, they were all burned up. They were, I, I guess some on the hangar deck was too. But yeah, we were sure. Like I said, we were all for luck. Were you in on invasions? What? Iwo Jima, uh, Pelilu, any of the island invasions? Invasion in the Philippines. Yeah, well, of course, we were out, but we were an attack group. They had a group, and I think that's the one uh, the president was in. And the invasion fleet, what they call it, I think it was maybe the fifth or seventh fleet. But the, the fifth and the third was only uh, all they were both in charge of that. Typhoon, we were trying to get through to go to Formosa again. When the typhoon hit, we went up there and they, and they damaged several plants, like I said. They got a lot of torpedoes in the, well, them two cruisers that were ours. And they gave us a replacement and the next night, the first night, they come in the first run on torpedo. They were to take torpedoes if they were coming for the carriers. They always tried to protect the carriers with the four inside the unit and the cannons and the, and the cruisers and the battle wagons. There was two battle wagons to each task group and four carriers and I don't know how many cruisers and then the destroyers. Each carrier had a, their own destroyer. When we were taking on the plane or something, and that our destroyer kept with us and we go out and fleet other supplies with all on a zigzag course. Well, I don't know when they asked. Like I say, if anything I can ask you a question, truthfully. We're really just interested in your memories. What do you say? We want to hear what you have to say. Uh, how long did it have to stay? Uh, we just, your wartime memories are what we're here for. What you remember? Oh, the, the typhoon was the worst. It was kind of so, you know, not that the people wasn't afraid of the Japs and stuff, but it got more or less routine. We were getting up to the airport at uh, 
near Japan and the war was getting closer to end. Of course, we didn't know this when we got to Tom. We knew the city had to be talking. But, uh, you know, we never know what to do. But uh, I suppose we got my other title. But, but uh, the fleet. Well, it, it, like I say, it was the attack crew, and we would go in close. But about every three days, we had to go back to the tank because of everything they took on out to sea, even the food and stuff. But uh, they had to have oil every time, you know. You had to go back where you could. And I think that's what happened to the camp for that summer of time. Did any of the Japanese people, the Kamikaze pilots, did any of them ever live, like, you know, go in the water or were rescued or anything like that? I don't know if you ever rest that, but I don't. She asked you if any of the pilots from the Japanese that were diving at the ships, did any of them ever survive? No, uh, I wonder if you pulled any of that water or anything. Of course, the suicide pilots didn't survive because they, they, no, that's what they were trained to do, to, to well, take off. Yeah, they but then now when we first uh, yeah, organized the third fleet, they had, to, they had a lot of real good pilots. And the uh, torpedo planes carried two torpedoes, they bet it. They they come in and they tried, of course, they always tried to get to the carriers. That was the main item to get to carriers because they were the ones who were shooting their planes down and stuff. But uh, like I say, we're, we're one of the few carriers in the world. Did you rescue pilots? Did rescue American flyers? Did you rescue any American pilots? Did you rescue any American pilots? Oh, well, lots of pilots would go over to the side, come in, and Tell us. Well, uh, boy, I come over, and they didn't catch your tail hooks. They usually went over, either hit the barriers, or they went off the side. And then one, one time a boy could, they left his arm in the, in the gun pit. They, they cut his arm fair off, but he, he was, they saved him. There was another time a plane was about to go over the side and then the canopy had come by and caught this boy's arm. And he was screaming and hollering and horse and everything. They were trying to get ropes on the plane. He went over the side. But we lost a little plane coming on. They miss a tail hook and they go over the side or catch on fire. And only one time they had a, a plane come back with the belly tank. Usually they'd drop them. But he'd come back in and when he did it, he caught the tail hook. Tank flew on, and I guess a prop hit or something caught it on fire, and had three boys uh, both him and another one close by some way. I don't know why they were they were burnt so bad that they probably died. We took, they took them off ship, but they were going up and died when they got him over on the can. We had our own. Uh, Hands. He did, every carrier had his own, like I say, they took care of our guard mail and, and anything that uh, transferred anybody that was perfect. So we all had a good each one had a couple cans. Uh, the big carriers may have more than that, but ours would go over before we went to take them to be finished taking them. That's the only time they didn't go in there. When you were taking on planes, you were, they, they were taking the 
don't think sometimes we go for our task group to get poor we'll get our place down. But that was bad weather, you know. I was not pulled as strong that time as we like to hear about our plane back down. But, and then this I'd say this storm, like I say, you got so kind of uh, not that anybody was you know, it was dangerous all the time when Jack was coming in, but then it got so it was kind of more routine, and you just go to the guy when he conditioned one, or go back and out. I was on three, and condition three was just a, a lookout, since more or less we was served on that. And when you was in the gunner's building, you, you, you either had the eight to twelve, or the twelve to four, or when you pour the eight, and then you start right over again, so you didn't sleep much. We were getting up at, uh, when the war was over, we were getting up about two o'clock and having uh, a roll or something to eat. And of course, they were getting, the flight was going off, it was getting daylight, so they were going off about three o'clock in the morning. And we got up early and we'd be on the, Condition one mount to that night. And if you had to go on watch, if you had the 8 to 12, you had to go on watch. So you didn't sleep. <laughs> you got so you sleep on a helmet or anywhere when you was, when the gas would come in. Did, did the planes come at night too, or only in the daytime? Attacks at night? Were there attacks at night? Oh, that is usually at night, uh, right before dark and in the morning. When the war is like that's when they come in. Mm -hmm. And then, after the most of one time, they drop flares and stuff. They will, there's so many gas running. I could count three or four. After a certain time of the night, we didn't have radar guns, so we didn't fire our carriers. They made smoke screens and stuff. And all of them did because they, they were dropping flares and stuff. So it, it gives us enough time several times. Their real main weapon was their tarp, uh, was their torpedo planes. They made a tarp for us and they, were, they wanted to do lots of damage. They, they tried to dive bomb us and stuff like that, but we would shoot most of them down. And they'd get up above, and the torpedo planes that would come in just as close to the water as they could come, you know. Down low, down low. Yeah, and they tried to get over the, of course they had the cans and cruisers to all get over before they got into us. Is that a thousand for just your fleet or a thousand for the whole war? I believe that was a thousand for his ship. Oh, okay. For his aircraft carrier, the USS Calvin. Okay, that was a thousand for them. Gosh. A thousand enemy aircraft shut down. Wow. Yeah, we went down on the cruiser, but I didn't get to see many of it, but we were a little late that morning getting there, and, I, and we were kind of missed the morning, and it was kind of a bad day. When but everybody was on the captain who was invited to it. It was quite an honor to have it. I don't know where it's at now, the cruise missile. But He's talking about know. the Aegis class carrier, cruise missile carrier that was named after the captains and going through the uh, ceremony when it was commissioned. And you saw your old pals? Your old buddies? Did you see any old people that you knew at that? Yeah, I used to be one. To come down from Detroit, but he's been dead for years. And I never, it seemed like I never got to one of the reunions. They, they still have a reunion. There's still some of them living, I guess. I'm, I'm 87 or 
so I'm, uh, I was one of the older ones when I got on the carrier. They always called me the old man because I was, I think it was one other person in that, our division. I think the third division was uh, older than me, but most of them were not young. How many people were on the Calvin? How, how many people were on that? You don't remember? Hundreds? Uh, there's over a thousand horses. Big carriers had two or three thousand on them, you know. It, it's like a city. And, uh, it, uh, it, was, it was quite a very good thing. I just think we'll come through a lot of it. Like I said, we were just lucky to the luck, you know. You done whatever you were supposed to do, and that's what I done when I was in. I was no big hero or nothing like that. We just done what you were supposed to do. Everybody worked together. We had a pretty good ship. We never had much trouble on the ship. We had good captains and executive officers. They took good care of the crews, you know. Usually they say officers don't care about the crews, but they did. They were, they made sure that we had to, as good a food as possible to have. Or if they come down and they eat at the kitchen, there wasn't nothing decent to eat. They did. They were, were been right after them, and they were they took them. So we did have a well, good shoot. Like I say, I am the only one person I think. I think it was a, a boy earlier who was on the carrier. But uh, they were all over, you know. Like, like I say, we were needing them so bad when they, when I went in and boot camp, they didn't go to boot camp on me. Mm -hmm. They soon got you in shape to go out. And then I was, I was excited that you got a chance to be where some of them were Airedale, we call them, and they helped with the flight crew and stuff. And, and the gunnery division mostly done all the uh, putting on supplies and done that part of the work. And the help with fuel. I always had, I, not everybody did, but I always helped with fuel. It was kind of a Job. It took about um, 10, 15 people and, and a jeep to get the main line over for the fuel line. They took a gasoline on uh, up for them. Well, we got our help to do it. And then that was the problem with the government division. We even paint, we even done paint too. But that's about all. You know, we were, like I say, in several places. Sometimes we'd be out for six, seven months, we wouldn't see anybody, you know, nothing but water.
we were welcome in the Wilson Hall, not likely to be a time for a full scholarship. And that is probably one of the worst wars we ever had, you know, terrible conditions to fight. Of course, I was in the Navy, I didn't know the land, you know. But, uh, he worked for 10 years in his hometown newspaper, his job in that, and then came over here and worked in Cincinnati for 25 years after that. Yeah, I worked in the library where the right. court index was for years when they tore down that building. Really? We moved out of that over to, closer to the courthouse. And we moved out of that over to closer to the courthouse. moved over to the same floor. <laughs> It was quite a thing on the roof. If I worked there for managed to pay for that for the years at the court in that they were legal paper, they could put a steel print. Mm -hmm. They're over on Central Park right now. They're over on Central Park right now. Yeah. yeah. Well we're very appreciative of your time for coming over and telling us your memories. Yeah. Appreciate your time, so That he appreciates your time. He appreciates your time, so that's the interview. <laughs> so you're done. We didn't know if we